So in this example, we're going to consider that we're modeling uh, a rod of length L that's been heated up to an even temperature of 100 degrees. So we've got a, an initial condition of 100. And then uh, at time zero, each end of the um, rod is immersed in an ice water bath with, with temperature zero. And we'll watch the resulting heat profile um, in the rod evolve under the heat equation. So we'll make the standard uh, separation of variables assumption that there exists a solution that looks like uh, a function of x times a function of t. And we substitute that into the PDE. And when we do that, we get um, yg prime equals ky double prime g. And then we can divide by uh, kyg both sides. And this becomes g prime over kg equals y double prime over y. And then the observation is that um, if I do uh, ddx to both sides, say, then on the left-hand side, there's no x's over here. So this is a constant. So ddx to the left-hand side is equal to 0. That means that ddx of the right-hand side is also equal to 0. And so that tells me that the right-hand side um, is a constant function of x. And I'll call that constant minus lambda. And then the reasoning, of course, is completely symmetric. So if I did ddt of both sides, that would tell me that the left side is also a constant. And so the only way that this um, equation can hold is if both sides are equal to the same constant. And we call it minus lambda because, well, it turns out to make signs convenient. OK. So from this equation, um, we get two different equations, two different ODEs. So for g prime over kg equals minus lambda, that becomes g prime equals minus lambda kg. And if we look at um, y double prime over y equals minus lambda, this becomes y double prime equals minus lambda y. Now, for the first one, we can solve by basic methods and see that this looks like um, a constant times e to the minus lambda kt. Meanwhile, uh, if we look at y, uh, the solution for this one depends on the sign of lambda. So y could be equal to um, a cosine x root lambda plus b sine x root lambda in the case when lambda is positive. Um, if lambda is equal to 0, this is going to look like a plus bx. And if um, lambda is negative, this will be a times cosh x root minus lambda plus b cinch x root minus lambda. So that's in the case when lambda is a negative number. OK, and so in general, a priori, um, you would have to test all three of these cases to find out if non-trivial solutions exist. And when I say test, I mean test them with the boundary conditions. So let's go back to the boundary conditions. So if we just look at the um, boundary condition uh, at the left end point 0, well, this, by the separation of variables assumption, is y of 0 times g of t. Now, uh, this means either y of 0 equals 0 or g of t equals 0. But if g of t equals 0, that implies, um, by this separation of variables assumption, that then u would be identically equal to 0. And that would be bad. So we would just get the trivial solution, and we don't want that. OK. That means we can rule out that one. And so in the same way, and so in the same way, uh, we also find that y of l is equal to 0. And so the, the moral of this story is that um, <coughs> boundary conditions on u become boundary conditions on the function of the spatial variable. All right. And now we do some testing. 
and so I'm going to save you the algebra here. But if we suppose that lambda is negative, then uh, we find out that it forces y to be identically equal to 0. That's the only way that first formula can hold. Um, or sorry, that third formula can hold. If we take lambda to be equal to 0, similarly, we get nothing. So the only thing left is for lambda to be positive. And if lambda is positive, then we are left with something of the form a cosine x root lambda plus b sine x root lambda. Um, and carrying this along, we find out that uh, this has, um, well, the, the boundary conditions force this cosine term to go to 0. And so we're just looking at b sine x lambda. And if that's going to be um, equal to 0, then that means that we have uh, x root lambda has to be an integer multiple of pi. And so we find that lambda has to look like n pi over l quantity squared. And then with that, we get the corresponding eigenfunction of um, sine n pi x over l. And that's good for n equal 1, 2, 3, etc. So all positive integers. Um, note that we don't take n equals 0, because that puts us back in the case for where uh, lambda is equal to 0. And that didn't give us any solutions. So the spectrum here includes um, just uh, these numbers right here. So this is the spectrum, the, the set of eigenvalues for this particular problem. OK, so that gives us uh, a general solution then by superposition. We can take any linear combination of, um, of these solutions. So now notice that our temporal equation is not fussy about the eigenvalues. It doesn't care. But the boundary value problem only has solutions for particular eigenvalues. So that actually dictates uh, the lambdas that, that we see in appearing in this equation right here. So superposition gives us e to the uh, minus, and then we've got lambda as forced by um, the boundary value problem, and then sine n pi x over l. All right. Um, it remains to figure out what to do with the initial conditions. So for that, we set t equal to 0. And we look at x, uh, sorry, ux0. And for this, the um, exponential terms all become 1. And so we are now just looking at the uh, Fourier sine series of our initial condition, f which in this case was 100. So now we need to go figure out what these Fourier sine series coefficients bn should be. So the normalizing factor is 2 over l. And we've got the integral 0 to l of our function, which is 100, times sine n pi x over l dx. And uh, I'm going to pull that 100 out, so it'll become 200 over l. And then I'm going to um, integrate that sucker, and I get um, L over n pi 1 minus cosine n pi. So that simplifies to 200 over n pi 1 minus negative 1 to the n. And I now know that my general solution is this uh, series with coefficients that look like 200 uh, over pi times 1 minus negative 1 to the n over n times e to the minus lambda n pi over l squared times kt sine n pi x over l. And the only thing that remains is to maybe mess around with the formula a little bit and make it prettier. Um, I noticed that this 1 minus negative 1 to the n, um, every other term drops out. And the ones that remain are equal to 2. So I could rewrite this as 400 over pi times the sum n equals 1 to infinity n odd 
of um, 1 over n e to the minus n pi uh, over l squared kt sine n pi x over l. And that looks uh, good enough for me. I will take that as my final solution. And uh, so here's a graph showing what this guy um, looks like. And so you can see um, there's the initial condition uh, across the front. It's kept equal to a constant right here. And then you can see more or less an exponential decay, and things are starting to look an awful lot like sine curves as, as the heat uh, melts away through the end of the rod.